All right, today I'm going to do a tutorial on painting a candle. Um, I'm going to use this Gerhardt Richter candle as an example. This is a very technically sophisticated painting. Uh, looks, it's, it would be under the category of photo reel. Um, this one is a, a very difficult thing to get because it uses subtle contrast. Uh, a flame is easier if you're using more contrast. And what I'm going to show you is an easier way to make it look like it's actually a flame uh, by having more contrast. But this is a very difficult painting to get to work. That That's Gerhard Richter. That's a very uh, great painter. He also did abstract expressionism later, still is doing it. So, um, now the first thing I've done is I created a fairly light, fairly bright. yellow to paint the base color for the candle for the wax part. I'm just going to scrub this in thin I don't want it to be too wet dark. So that I can still change it later. I'm going to put just a touch right down in here in the base of this. Okay, there's a base coat for the candle. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to work on the candle first on this and so the next thing I'm going to need to do is mix a color that is uh, a little bit more have a little more red or a little more orange in it so bottom part of the candle has a shadow on it. What I'm trying to do is get the the candle itself has a uh, translucent effect because the light from the from the actual flame goes into the candle and you want to have the candle end up looking like some light is going into the actual wax and then count shining out through the wax. Now I'm going to start adding the shadow down in the corner.
Now, my temptation is, because I work with pottery, I like working with clay, my temptation is to take my finger and just rub that. It's not a good idea with oil paint because oil paint is toxic. But I'm going to blend it a little bit with a paper towel. Now I've got a little bit of a shadow on the bottom of the candle there. The next thing that this that I see in the candle is some orange. Here's the I haven't actually showed the picture, but this is the actual picture of the candle that I'm working off of. I'm not so concerned about getting it exactly like that picture as I am getting the illusion of the flame and the uh, translucence of the wax. Okay, added a little orange. Now, I... I'm going to kind of brighten it up just a little bit. Brighten it up a little bit with the orange, a little brighter orange. Now again, I need to take the paper towel and blend a little bit in here. Now I'm going to take the brush with the dark on it and bring a little bit more up from the bottom. And I'm going to bring a little bit of more, some orange into that. And I'm going to use a paper towel to blend it a little bit more. Build up a little more of the oil around the edge.
starting to get a look something like what I want. I want to get it sort of right and then I'll make some adjustments when I paint the background in which in this particular case is dark. I think I'll start. This is the part that requires the most careful painting because there's a very hard edge on the flame there's a glow that goes from the from the flame around the edge of the flame <clears throat> in a photograph of a candle for sure <clears throat> and possibly if you're just looking at a candle but it definitely shows up on a photograph I may use white to paint this flame in, but I might just leave it blank as the the canvas. But the flame has to be very, very much lighter and brighter. One problem I have with this is that I used a pencil drawing. I used a pencil drawing to actually make this and I can't leave any of that pencil. I'll have to paint over it. Now oil paint, that's something that's fairly easy to do, <clears throat> but it would mean, mean that I'd have to use white. In watercolor, you wouldn't have that. You wouldn't have that. Well, you could, but technically in watercolor you wouldn't have that. Alright, so there's that. Now, I'm going to do something that not everybody would approach it this way. I do because it helps me see. I'm going to paint the background black or a, a slightly brownish, reddish brown, black. I'm going to paint that in before I go on to the next step because I want to help myself see the contrast that I'm trying to get in this picture and it will help me if I have that there so I can see where I need to address to adjust the where I need to adjust the contrast. This step to the other side. Now this top part of the candle, this is somewhat tricky. I'm, I went around and I put the edge around the I put the edge around the shape and then I'm going out here and carefully expanding this edge out and then it doesn't really matter I can just paint that background black
Okay, so there's the candle with the background black. Down in the corner here, the candle is pretty dark. The shadow So that's going to be one of the harder things to get blended in at this point. Black is a very invasive... Ah, see I got it on my finger, I got it over there. That's one of the problems I have, I get stuff on my fingers. Now I'll have to go back in and re-yellow that area. You gotta be careful with this black because it's it's the darkest color. And being the darkest color <clears throat> It will muddy up your other colors really fast. This would be, for me, much easier if I let it dry in between layers to get this to work. But I'm showing you a quick way to get this to go. I keep touching the side over there. Now, this is not what you should do, but I, on this particular part, this is so hard to get right that I need really good control. So I'm just going to use a fingertip. You should really wear gloves if you're going to touch the paint. I'm not touching it very much and I don't paint a lot. I used to paint. But I don't paint so much anymore, so it's not like I'm doing this all the time. But if you paint all the time, you should avoid touching the paint. <clears throat> now I'm going to come back and retouch some of the yellow. Touch a little bit of the orange. There's a pearly bright orange spot right, fairly bright orange spot right there. And a section of the wick. That's pretty black.
There's a little bit of orange right at the base of the flame. And now, <clears throat> this part up here is going to be hard because this is not simple. I think I'm forgetting to turn this on and off at some point. <clears throat> I've added a little orange there at the base of the wick. I've added black at the where the wick is. Now this next part is really difficult because it's a matter of blending this this halo out into the black there's a sharp edge on the edge of the flame. You've got to get that halo to be diffuse. So put a little bit of color, scratchy color on the surface of that. And then we'll come in here. Definitely going to have to paint the flame white. It's too hard on this without letting it dry in between. There's a possibility I may have to let this dry to be able to get this to work. Uh, I, I really wanted to show this without having to do it. <clears throat> um, on multiple painting, but this, it's so hard to drag, especially working small like this. It's so hard to get the paint to go where you want without wrecking it. I think what I'll do is I will let this one dry and we'll continue it later. I may paint the flame in white right quick just to see what that looks like and then because I know it's going to have to be done since this is not This definitely I will let dry and then come back to it because that way I won't keep getting into the black and I can um, control this much better. It only needs a tiny bit more work but the problem is it can't be done until I have that black out of the way so I don't keep running into it. S some person who's a little more um, What's the word you would use? I can paint all kinds of things, but my motor skills are not probably as strong as some people's. So I tend to end up getting a finger in the wet paint and getting it on the canvas. There's some people that probably are a little more precise. Um, I'm better if I let it dry in between layers. That's just something that's your personal, personal touch when you're painting. So, till next time. 
time to finish put the finishing touches on this I had to let it dry because the paint was getting too wet and it was or the paint was too wet and it was getting hard to control but this gives an opportunity to see how you can paint over the top oil painting. This is not quite dry. It's, um, it's close, or it's not, it's not, it's still sticky, and if I added medium to these areas, it would be, it would go right back to being wet, so I have to be careful still, but, um, all right, so trying to finish this thing um, still think that that's a little too bright the yellow in that part matching colors from a photo to a painting take some practice visually you need to get your eyes set and sometimes you don't get it perfect even after you've had a lot of practice at it but the object is to understand at least what the paint is going to look like when you put it next to the other colors so that you get something that's somewhat close to what you're going for. So I'm going to leave that. That's still a little bit too yellow for what I'm going for, but I'm going to come on with some more orangish color. I'm mixing the mar varnish with the paint. To thin it a little bit and to make it flow better on the canvas. Damar will help it dry. Now I'm scratching this, this color in, trying to blend it. Because this has got kind of a, the translucence is coming out of the candle down in here. Now I'm going to mix a little thicker paint. I'm 
I'm still adjusting the tone a little bit. And I mixed a little thicker paint. At this point, you'd have a pretty convincing candle. However, there's a certain thing in painting where you decide, is it done? Is it as far as I can go with it? Or can I go farther with it? And I think I can get this a little closer with some more adjustments. Now, I'm going to create a little bit of contrast here. And this is one of those things that becomes risky. Not enough. because you can go too far very quickly. There's some final touches that I need to make on this. I'm going to do the very lightest one first. I've used my finger a teeny bit in this painting because it's, I'm used to working with clay. You shouldn't use your fingers in oil paint, especially if you do it a lot, and I don't do it a lot. But I'm used to working with pottery, so I have a, a want to use my fingers. And that's not the best thing to do. It's just a hard thing not to do but you should use some something like a paper towel or possibly an eraser something or wear gloves if you work with oil paint a lot because you shouldn't touch it now I want to enhance this slightly and again that's going to require some blending I think in some ways this is getting the point across 
Uh, but what I think that it needs a little bit of, and this is tricky, is it needs a little bit more black in the actual shadow on the candle. So I'm going to try to soften up a little of this stuff and take it up in here. In some ways this is one of the trickiest parts because this is a very this is a very important part of getting the blending right. It's this weird subtle shadow that transitions between the translucence of the candle and the dark area below the candle. I think it needs a little bit more pigment in there. In the color part of it. Now here's another thing that's happening right here. Right now I'm putting strokes on. And they're scratchy little strokes. If you leave the brush strokes so that you can see them, they call that painterly. Sometimes, and I don't know why I have a personality that way, I kind of like my stuff to be more towards the photo reel. However, I do appreciate the texture of the brush strokes. But, sometimes the brush strokes are a nice thing. Obviously, that's what the whole point of the Van Gogh paintings is, that the brush strokes are nice. And they're, they're pleasing to look at. Now I think, for this one, if I really was gonna, if I really was gonna take this all the way, I would probably paint on this for a little longer. To get more of it exactly right. Now I'm bringing some black in there again. And that's not what I'm after. I'm going to try and scratch a little of that off. I'm going to try and use one really thick swath of paint. Cover that up. As I was saying, I think I would spend more time drying this and working on it if I were going to perfect it. But this is a beginning. These are not intended to be tutorials for people that have painted a lot. These are tutorials for people that are trying to figure out how to do things. And at this point, I've achieved a pretty much 
a, an illusion of translucence and the light and the, how, how absolutely white the flame has to be to make the contrast work. There's a shadow. This isn't a, this isn't a finished painting if I were going to keep working because I'd keep working on more and more layers. But I think that now you can see that it's the contrast. Sometimes there's a little glow around the flame. I don't know if that's actually a plasma or if it's just an illusion because it's a photograph. But then there's a very bright place and you and that's why it looks like it's a fire. The candle has the colors that you would normally paint a fire. You'd think you're painting a fire. But there's lots of white light that comes out of a fire, even if the edge is glowing red. You look at a campfire and it has an orange look, but if you look carefully and think about it, you're seeing a lot of white in there, in the part where the very hot flame is. So the contrast is... And, and oftentimes, uh, to make it look right, the white has to be where you might think you're seeing yellow if you were really looking at something. So I think this one is close enough to get the illusions and so that you can see how you go about getting that. We'll call this one good. Maybe I'll do another one later.